Hello guys, welcome back. We're at a new place here and I'm going to be doing another video I haven't done in a while guys. That is discussing to you about upcoming new releases in the fragrance industry. We're of course going to be using iFragrance, which is a website that pretty much carries the fragrance community in the researching and finding out what the new releases are. If you see us fragrance reviewers talking about new releases, we're usually referring back to that website. You guys are probably watching this video just before or during 2024. And I will say, you know, first of all, Happy New Year. And second, 2023 was a good year for fragrances. I think actually there was a lot of good releases, which I'm very happy about because, you know, I kind of thought the period between 2017 to 2022 was kind of a lackluster five year period where we were a little bit, um, you know, just it was a little bit dry <laughs> for new fragrances that were actually good and interesting. A lot of redundant flankers that were kind of forgettable. But luckily 2023 changed that and I'm hoping 2024 continues that trend. So today, using mainly iFragrance, uh, we're going to be covering seven different fragrances that are quite exciting, I think you should know about. And hopefully we will just kind of read the notes, the descriptions on them and see if we can get hyped and excited about them. And I want to see what you guys think about these new upcoming releases also. Let's begin. <music> This is the newest release from Atrium Fragrances, it's Mr. Majestic. The plum in this is prominent and this was meant to showcase plum, so brilliant. Um, really gives um, this both a unique edge and a bit of a pop as soon as you put it on. Uh, to me it's very unique, definitely a head turner. It's deep, it's rich, it's sweet and dark and it's unique as well and it is also great quality and really well blended. First of all, we have Jean-Paul Gaultier coming out with a new Le Beau flanker called Le Beau Paradise Garden. So there's Le Beau Eau de Toilette, there's Le Parfum, and now they've got Paradise Garden. So what is the theme of Le Beau? Le Beau is a, 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 a flanker line that so far always focuses around the notes of tonka bean and coconut. So it's always got this creamy coconut sunscreen base to the fragrance DNA that makes it mass appealing, creamy, you know, uh, unique, it has character. I like that about the Le Beau line. It's quite a versatile line so far. I know there's only two fragrances, but I, I do think that the Le Parfum was a, an improvement over the original. I didn't really expect another flanker. I don't really know what else they would do with it. I don't really know if they need another flanker, but hey, money must be made. So <laughs> they released Paradise Garden. So it looks green. I'm thinking this is going to be a springtime variation on Le Beau. Uh, Let's see what the notes are. Let's see what the description is, first of all. So this is quite interesting. A woody a green aquatic fragrance by master perfumer Quentin Bash. If you guys don't know, he made Ganymede and uh, Bois Imperial by uh, Essential Parf Parfum. So he is a good perfumer. He's made some good stuff. This heavenly fragrance is a ray of tropical sunshine with its dazzling flowers and seductive scents, all plucked from the garden of Gautier. Okay. Fresh, salty coconut. That's interesting, salty coconut. I don't really know many fragrances like that. Melds with green fig and sensual sandalwood. Okay, spicy ginger, invigorating mint, and sun-drenched tonka bean. So that's good. So they have that coconut and tonka bean uh, DNA still going on there. The green, aquatic, and woody notes of this fragrance are as passionate as the virile men who wear it. Ooh, virile men. <laughs> Sign me up for a bustle then, guys. <laughs> But all jokes aside, it actually sounds quite interesting. A green aquatic fragrance. What do you guys think of that? I guess the greenness will come from the green fig aspects. Because if you've ever eaten like an unripened fig, it does have that sharp, uh, unripened greenness to it, as well as the mint in there. This sounds quite interesting. I feel like this is going to be a really sexy spring and summertime fragrance. It has some interesting notes in here. Top notes of coconut, ginger, and mint. Heart notes of green fig. Base notes of sandalwood and tonka bean. I think this could be an incredibly sexy fragrance or an incredibly flat fragrance, <laughs> a really designer friendly kind of fragrance. It, you don't get the full fragrance formulation, of course, from the uh, fragrance notes of any release. The, the fragrance note breakdown is more to represent what the fragrance is going to smell like. It doesn't give you the full picture, of course, guys. In reality, perfumers use dozens and dozens of different ingredients in a formulation behind the scenes. But depending on how complex or interesting this fragrance is, this could be either quite a forgettable flat designer fragrance or it could be a really sexy and mass appealing designer scent. I like these new and interesting approaches of things like fig, ginger, mint and coconut. That's really interesting. I don't really know any other fragrance that has those kind of notes put together. 
I'm quite excited for this. I'll hopefully try this out and keep you guys noted about this uh, release. What do you guys think? Are you hyped for this one? 32% of people who watch School of Scent are subscribed to us. If you guys want to see our channel grow to really help us out, click subscribe. Let's get that number to 40%. Thank you. This next one is kind of a re-release. Uh, it's kind of what Tom Ford always does. They take a fragrance from the private blend, which is Oud Mineral, and they're bringing Oud Mineral to the signature line. I was quite surprised when I saw this because I kind of thought they just discontinued Oud Mineral. I thought they were just done with it because uh, it's kind of a strange fragrance. I quite like it. I think it's a very interesting seaweed, uh, marine, <laughs> um, aquatic Oud fragrance. So it's not even aquatic, it's more like marine. It has just this seaweed aspect to it. It's a very interesting woody seaweed scent that was kind of uh, really nicely balanced. Weird, but balanced and versatile. It was an interesting signature, but I'm kind of glad they brought it to the signature line. What do you guys think of this new bottle design? Is it something that uh, meshes well with you? Oud Mineral is meant to embody the essence of beachside bonfires with smoky oud and fiery pink pepper to resemble a campfire. I would say by the fireplace does that. And oceanside vibes with seagrass, sea salt, salty amber and salt water. The American House has brought back those nights we will never forget and the friends we will always remember by re-releasing one of their most unique scents. I like the fact that this fragrance represents unforgettable nights and friendship. That's what we want to hear, guys. I like that. I approve of this message. They're saying that no structure appears to be the same as the 2017 iteration. Which, yeah, you can see on the screen uh, right now as we're editing this video. And yeah, I think it's going to be a, a nice re-release. Usually they do change the formulation a tiny bit with the signature line. I feel like they always make the frames a tiny bit more mass appealing, but they're generally the same. Uh, but I think it should be interesting. I might just still try it out if I'm ever in, in the, the Tom Ford department area in a store and just see uh, if there's much difference between these two. Do you guys feel happy that they've brought back Oud Mineral? Did you try it? Are you excited to try it? Let us know, guys. Valentino are releasing another Born and Roma flanker because they can't help themselves. <laughs> it's, it's relentless and never ending, but okay. So Womo Born and Roma Intense was their latest flanker, I believe, and it was very good. It kind of, to me, smells like Paco Rabanne Invictus, How the Baby Was Stronger With You. It's just very much, very pleasant mainstream uh, perfumery that was quite versatile as well. It's pretty good, a nice signature. Uh, and now they've got a new flanker called Womo Green Stravaganza, which is an interesting and cool name, actually. They've got this interesting, cool green bottle, which is very uh, daring and eye-catching. I think it's quite interesting. I've always liked the Valentino Womo bottles, actually. What do you guys think about this? I kind of feel like it could have become very tacky, but at the same time, I don't know why it does work. It kind of has this, this diamond-esque, fancy chandelier effect to the bottle, which I think actually does work. I do like. So there's a women's and men's version. The men's version, the notes are top notes of bergamot, middle notes of coffee, and then the base notes are star anise and vetiver. So star anise can give off this almost licorice-like effect to a fragrance. It was iconically used in the original Armani Code. It's an interesting note breakdown. Obviously, overly, overly simplified. This is a designer release. Sometimes they just want to keep it simple. Uh, I didn't expect this fragrance to be a coffee fragrance. Uh, it's not particularly green either. <laughs> From the note breakdown, probably maybe the vetiver is a little bit green, but yeah, it's quite an interesting note breakdown. I don't really know what we're going to be expecting from something like this. This could be either incredible or lame because to me licorice vetiver and coffee sounds like a weird combination that's going to clash it doesn't sound right it doesn't sound like it should be going together i don't know what to say about this one guys what do you think are you excited for this born in roma green stravaganza this next one is not for us men uh, this is a men's fragrance channel guys if you don't know if you're new here uh, but it's quite interesting i didn't realize ysl would be releasing a new flanker of their iconic top setter Black Opium. They're making a new flanker of Black Opium called Black Opium Over Red. It's got a quite interesting, cool bottle. If you guys don't know, the original Black Opium is a nice uh, signature for women. It smell fairly attractive. I think it's an attractive DNA that was quite coffee and vanilla uh, focused. So it's an interesting coffee-based signature for women. And I'm getting the impression from this picture here that's gonna include now some cherry. So the top notes are Cherry Accord and Mandarin Essence. Heart notes of jasmine, orange blossom, and black tea. Base notes of coffee, patchouli, and Madagascar vanilla. If it's actual Madagascar vanilla, that's one of the most expensive vanilla uh, variations in the world. I believe, I think it's Madagascar vanilla and bourbon vanilla are the most expensive vanillas you can use perfumery. So I wonder if it's actually the real stuff because that would make this more of a niche price tag. <laughs> like 
200 to 300 pounds. But hey, this sounds like a nice no breakdown. I think this would be a really sexy fragrance. I'm looking forward to trying this in store. What do you guys think? Are you excited about this release? So Tom Ford are coming out with a new gourmand in their private blend line called Vanilla Sex. I'm getting feminine vibes from this fragrance. I feel like this is gonna be a feminine fragrance. Let's read about it first. Tom Ford's newest creation is all about vanilla. As the name implies, it summons rich and decadent vanilla absolute and tincture with ultra vanille, which I've never heard of before. Interesting, I've never heard of that. Which is a patented resinous vanilla ingredient made by Givaldan. Tempting florals merge with enti entrancing bitter almond with the luxury of sacred sandalwood. Okay, this sounds feminine, but <laughs> at the same time, uh, Ultra Vanille sounds like it's a new molecule that's not been around in perfumery for that long, potentially. It's patented by Givaldan. Anything that's under pet patent is probably still relatively new as a fragrance molecule because it takes several years, you know, it takes many years for the patent to eventually run out and that's when a, a molecule becomes more common. I believe that's actually what happened with Ambroxan. Ambroxan was more, uh, expensive back in the day was more because it was under patent so the, only the more expensive fragrances could use it and then when it became mainstream of course and broxton went everywhere but notes of vanilla tincture vanilla absolute tonka absolute floral notes bitter almond and sandalwood and ultra vanille so again this could be one of those gimmicky fragrances i'm not excited about this just because of what tom ford have done in the past recently a lot of their private blend stuff has been underwhelming and I will say this kind of reminds me of a fragrance like Myrrh Mystère. So they really focus on this luxurious one note of myrrh, which is a great ingredient. And they kind of went for that and it was done well in that fragrance creation, but that fragrance ended up being just lackluster in all other aspects. And I kind of feel like with vanilla sex, they're gonna do something similar. They're gonna focus a lot on these vanillas, really hype it up, uh, but then actually not make a complete creation that has several different nuances to it to make it more interesting to smell. This could just smell overly simplistic and disappointing. I'm very much weary about private blend line fragrances nowadays. What do you guys think? Are you excited for this new uh, private blend fragrance called Vanilla Sex by Tom Ford? Our Maf Club de Nuit Oud, which is an interesting release. I was not expecting this. So of course, Club de Nuit, they're also kind of going crazy with flankers. We've had Club de Nuit, Siage, Milestone, Woman, <laughs> Iconic, Untold, Urban Man, Elixir, a lot of flankers now, they just know that this line is just a hit and they know they've got themselves something big, they gotta just milk <laughs> at this point. But in fairness, a lot of the fragrances aren't necessarily um, just the same thing over and over. They are fairly different flankers and Cotton Wheat Oud sounds like it's not going to be a clone of anything. It sounds like they're going to be doing their own thing. I'm not sure what they would be cloning if it's called Club and Wheat Oud, but let's read about it. So we've got top notes of bergamot, pineapple, peach, passion fruit, pear and plum. This is like a fruit cocktail. Wow. Heart notes of jasmine, freesia, violet leaves and cashmere woods, base notes of sandalwood, Cambodian Oud, cypriol, crystal amber, musk and vanilla. I'll say straight away, you're not gonna get real oud at this price tag. If it's gonna be priced at a similar uh, amount of money as Club de Nuit usually is. But this sounds very interesting. This sounds more feminine than it does masculine. I don't think this is gonna be another Aventus clone. I kind of thought maybe it was because I saw the pineapple there, but this sounds very floral, very fruity and fairly sweet as well. I think this could be, I think at most it might be unisex. I'm not sure if us guys are gonna be able to rock this but it sounds very interesting. I like all the interesting notes they've used in here. It sounds like a fruit cocktail fragrance. What do you guys think? Are you excited for this release? Although I'll have to say, I'm not feeling that lid. Uh, what is that lid? That is uh, SpongeBob SquarePants dried out. He's become dry and he's now a lid on a perfume bottle. What is going on? And then finally, the last one on this list is Hugo Boss The Scent Elixir, which actually I'm surprisingly kind of for it because Hugo Boss bottled Elixir was very good. I actually thought to myself, finally, <laughs> Hugo Boss are doing good fragrances. They're actually thinking about what they're putting out there instead of just putting out the same forgettable rubbish that they used to put out all the time. And also the, the scent line itself. So the original Hugo Boss Descent, I wasn't feeling it. It kind of has some interesting notes like Meninka and Woody notes, leather notes, something like that. And uh, I remember it had some interesting ideas, but again, felt very flat. I didn't like it. The Private Accord uh, flanker, again, wasn't my favorite, but it was better. It had that chocolate uh, accord going on in there. And then the Le Parfum was even better, more interesting. And now they've got this new Elixir. Because of course, if you put Elixir on anything, you just make billions of pounds automatically. It sells. 
guaranteed. So I'm gonna release uh, our new Atrium uh, Elixir line for you guys, um, which is just gonna just have a, a you know maybe a, a hint of woody notes or something, and just you know that's it, guys. Make loads of money. So if you have anything that has the Elixir afterwards. Um, that's basically just a guaranteed formula for success these days. But let's look at the note breakdown. So the description for the men's side is, Boss, the scent elixir for men is an amber and leathery fragrance that, just like its feminine counterpart, offers a stronger and richer take on the original formula, which you would expect with the elixir name nowadays, of course. As much as fans were content with the original Boss, the scent, I wasn't, I had the bottle, I was not content with the original, brand wanted to take it up a notch and release the most intense version they could concoct. Top notes of red pepper, hard notes of lavender, base notes of sandalwood. That tells me nothing. And it's quite interesting because they've taken out the original uh, fragrances, Maninka fruit, which was uh, the iconic note for the scent originally. I know they've kind of taken it out over the years anyways, but uh, I'm not really sure how they can say this is the intense version of the original. I suppose they could just say, you know, it's like a, a woody fragrance again. <laughs> the original was a woody fragrance, I suppose. I'm not really sure how they relate. Red pepper, I see that and I think to myself of uh, Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Infrared because that fragrance had it and this kind of has a similar vibe of being an amber, probably sweeter fragrance. I don't know how sweet this is going to be. The note breakdown tells me nothing, guys. They're giving me nothing, but what do you guys think? Do you think Hugo Boss have changed their ways? Are they gonna carry on putting out some banger releases? Are you excited for The Scent Elixir? I think actually it already is available to purchase from makeup.co.uk if you're in the UK and you wanna buy it. And that concludes this video, guys. What are your thoughts on these upcoming new releases? Are you excited for what 2024 already has in store for us? For me personally, I would say that Le Beau Paradise Garden and The Scent Elixir are my two ones on my radar right now because they sound quite interesting. It could be really sexy fragrances and it could be uh, fairly new ideas. Let's see, guys. Let us know your thoughts on these new releases down below, guys. Make sure to check out our previous video on the best new releases of 2023. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.